Okay, here you go. I'll go tell them. Well, you can tell them we're ready. See, one of the problems you'll run into with this, don't ever set your heart on a predetermined blade size. First heat treat the steel and then see what you got left. Now this yeah. is a result of getting it too hot. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You aren't going to make much going around those corners. out of that. <laughs> yeah. I have one then. No, yeah, that's, that's what I want to show you. Yeah, that's the proper way to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. What we're going to talk about tonight <laughs> is a uh, different type of blade stock. It's there virtually for the asking. All you got to do is find yourself a, a metal working shop, a tool shop, <clears throat> any place that works in metal. They throw these away and they make excellent blades. Uh, my personal preference is I like a real thin blade knife, which is what those are there. Uh, sometimes they'll throw them away like this. A lot of times they'll break them up. But I want to show you this for your own safety. Don't ever take one of these and by hand try and open it up. Because you off. might get like ripped up like you. Just wood. take it out and try and throw it on the ground. Here's the way you, That's what you do. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's what you do. do you don't ever take one by hand because if that ever gets away from you, that the, you'll think a wildcat got a hold of you. Yeah. And it could be very injurious. Um, just, just take them and do this. But if you go to any metal working shop, when these are dull, they throw them away. Uh, just go in, preferably a small shop, you know, because you don't have to go through all the departments to get to somebody. Uh, ask them if they'll if they have any old hacksaw blades that you can have, or not hacksaw but bandsaw blades. Uh, they throw them away, and they're more than willing to let you have them. I'm sure. Another thing, if you're going to use this type of blade, where you see a grind mark running across it like that, these are welded together. Eliminate this. Don't use that part. Everybody see that where the grind mark runs across the blade? Don't use that. That's a well line in there. And I, on these, uh, on your bandsaw blades, the only thing that's heat treated is the teeth. That's to keep the backs flexible. And so what you have to do is heat treat the blades and you can really get them hard <clears throat> and I'll show you how hard. This, this blade here, this is a result of heat treating it, see how it's crooked, cockeyed, <laughs> cuts around corners. <laughs> uh, that's a result of getting it too hot. But to show you how hard that blade really is and why you have to anneal them, cover your eyes. It just it shatters like glass. It's just hard, hard. When you look at it, you, you can actually, if you, if you look at the edge, you can see the crystalline structure in it. It's, it's just super hard. Is that too hard? Like, way too hard, <laughs> way too hard. Uh, you don't know what kind of steel it is, do you? It's high speed steel. But you can't even touch it with a file. Hear that? Doesn't, doesn't even mark it. The corner of there. You'll take the teeth right off a file. It's that hard. That's way too hard. You don't want it like that. So the process is I usually cut them in like about a three inch length. I'll drill them. And if you're ha the best thing is if you have a drill press available, it's much easier.
straight as you can cut it. Uh, if the blade doesn't go in, usually it's just a matter of just running a little stiff sandpaper in there. It doesn't take much at all. And you can get a real nice fit for your blade in there. You want it just to slide in there like that without any gaps. I usually take the teeth off before I fit the blade in. But the procedure would be the same as what we went through last meeting. I put my holes in here, lay my pattern out for the handle, lay a center line out, and then you can transfer the hole. You can put a piece of tape on there and drill, and then you'll know that you've got your uh, blade position in the proper place. So then you, you've got a handle, you got your uh, blade drill for your pins. If you're having trouble drilling, uh, you can anneal it. some of the hardness out of it and if necessary it'll make it easier for you to drill uh, thing to do is take and clean it up with some emery so you get a nice <clears throat> clean polished steel because if you got oil on it or fingerprints it distorts the color so bring it to a nice clean polish. That's really about all you want to do to it. Just bring it to a light purple color where it starts to take to going beyond what they call a straw color and let it get into a purple color. That's because it's partly softened already. Last time we had when it's hard you get a little red. Like you showed us last time. Yeah, but this steel is different. Uh, this this will react differently. And, when we just start doing this, which is why I acquired so many knives, you start experimenting with different types of steel. Uh, the, the analysis of those saber saw blades is wholly different from what these band saw <laughs> blades are. Is that water? No, it's mineral oil. And that's what we use to quench them because we're going to have to heat treat these blades and I'll show you how to do that. And incidentally, uh, if, you, if any of you guys, you go out and you buy like Norton honing oil or anything like that, comes in a nice little three ounce can or whatever it is and it's very spendy, save your money. Go to Walgreens or wherever and buy plain old mineral oil. It costs you, you get all this for, for less than what you paid for that little three ounce can. And it's highly refined mineral oil and it's excellent for lock mechanisms, sewing machines. Uh, when I started my tool making career, I started at Singer Sewing Machine Company in Chicago. Guess what? They're, they're using the same thing for lubricating sewing machines. 
they put it in a little can and they sell it for three dollars. You know, and you can go and buy this for probably two dollars for the whole jug of mineral oil. I've heard of sewing machine oil. <laughs> huh? I've heard of sewing machine yeah. oil. And it's it's mm -hmm. spendy, it's expensive. Yeah. And like Norton and some of the other companies that manufacture uh, honing stones and stuff, yeah. same thing. Just to sell them nice little cans, and I know they're expensive. I don't know, probably three, close to three dollars. Yeah. Well, this doesn't cost three dollars for the whole quart, and it's that's what it is. It's mean? highly refined mineral oil. You could probably put that in your car, huh? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> no, because it doesn't have any additives in it. Okay. Would you say so, well, people drink it as a laxative. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they want to overdo it. I heard it was smooth. Huh? I heard it was smooth. Yeah. Coming out? <laughs> If you're going to use this blade stock here, you're better off if you can get a hold of two torches. The reason being, uh, you want to try and heat the blade uniformly across the length of the blade. It's a little too difficult with one torch. And if, if you're going to use a propane torch, don't, you're better off with a blowtorch tip like that than one of these pencil tip heads. The, these, uh, the flame is just too concentrated. You want something that's going to spread out and give you a little more heat. I could use a helper. Somebody could dump, dump this into there. And you just reuse it over and over and over. color chart. You want to get into this range here somewhere around 14 to 1500 degrees and you, uh, you can de roughly determine that just by the color of the steel. You can pass that around. You're somewhere within these three here. It's kind of a medium Part of the reason being, the hotter you get it, the more likely you are that it, the blade will warp on you. Mm -hmm. So, and it doesn't take a lot of heat to achieve the desired results here. Let's see. Well, I suppose I could do this. Normally what I'll do is I'll take, when I'm working with this stuff here, is I'll take a piece that's roughly about three inches, give or take a 
little bit. That just seems to be a convenient length to work with. These things will shatter, That's so... Good for your lungs. You go like that. And you don't want to force them, just let them cut. One advantage to cutting them off with this type of a wheel as opposed to grinding it is simply that you can see they run relatively cool. It's not burning the steel. Okay, so what we've done so far, I got the holes drilled in. I eliminated the teeth, and then we can go on to the heat <coughs> process. When you quench these, uh, you want to go in like this. Get the blade in there quick, on edgewise into the quench medium. Don't stick it in like this, because you want to quench the whole blade as quickly as possible without creeping up on it. And you don't want to go in sideways like that because you're cooling one side instantly and it could warp more on you. So you want to get, get it in there edgewise into the quench medium as quick as you possibly can. It's almost a little too bright in here. They don't have a double bank of lights. Okay. If the, if the lighting is a little more subdued, it's better. The reason being, in order to see the color in the steel, if you're under bright lights, you're getting hotter and hotter. So we're going to have to guesstimate it. Everybody wants it. 
kind of pay attention to the color that I'm bringing in this tube. Give it a little preheat first. Just kind of warm it up. It'll help minimize the warping. one here right now I, I can tell you is glass hard. <laughs> one way you yeah. can tell is if you look at that frosty silver color and just pass it around. It's oily. Is that, that good? That's what you want? Yeah. yeah. It kind of has a pattern in it. Well, it's not so much the pattern as I'm kind of guesstimating by the color, but you can check it. Right here. It's hard. That's hard. It just zings with a file. You couldn't even cut, probably cut that with a file. You'd wear your file out first. Then you just, hmm. well, you don't, you just do this and you don't worry about the other end. Right. Yeah. All, mm -hmm. all you want to get is the cutting portion of the blade. Well, I can do another one while you're passing that around with the file. Hmm. Yeah. So really, what what you want to do is uh, heat treat it and bring it up to a point of hardness where it'll make a good knife for you. But uh, that has to be annealed. That is way too hard, that edge of the chip. You could probably break it by hand, huh? Uh, probably could want to break it here. Mm -hmm. Try it. We got a lot of blade stuff. It's probably, you know, wow, that is hard. Two <laughs> places are real. It doesn't even bend. It just breaks. Glass a hard. Knife out of that. So the annealing is the first process where you just no uh, annealing it means to draw down the hardness. <laughs> but that's what you did over the, the torch, right? At first, your heart you're, you're bringing it up to a high state of hardness, and then you want to anneal it and draw it down. Yeah, annealing is a process of reducing the hardness. That's called tempering. Well, the whole process is tempering, yeah. So you take it way up and then you bring it down a little bit? Yeah, and if Before you, you try to sharpen it or before you turn Right. It? You, want, you want a blade like th that's in a hardened state, and then you want to shape it. Normally what I'll do is I'll take these blades 
you put a shape on the blade before you? A hard? lot of times I will, yes. Uh, I'll rough, uh, what, I, what I'll do is I'll heat treat a three inch piece and see how much good blade I've got because sometimes I'll warp on you. <coughs> Which doesn't mean that it's not a usable blade. See, like this has a little bit of work that you can pass it around and look at it. You know, it just means you'll end up with a shorter blade, that's all, to try and get some of that out of there. I'll start out with about a three inch piece and then my actual blade shape will be determined by how much it's warped. If it's warped too bad, which sometimes you'll run into, then I won't even use it. I'll just discard it. <coughs> but I'll heat treat another one and then we'll anneal it. Most of the time what I'll do is I'll rough cut the blade into a, uh, I'll trim it off and give myself a rough blade shape. Get rid of some of that extra steel. What do you cut it with? Rubber wheels. Yeah. You're not rubber, are you? It's, it's what they call a resinoid bond wheel. Okay, here, I'll do one just to show you. Okay, I got a piece of blade stock. It's been pre-drilled. Another quarter inch to three eighths inch from this hole here to the beginning of the knife handle. That gives you plenty. If you kind of just rough shape the blade before you heat treat it, uh, it's just that much less steel that you have to worry about trying to get it up to temperature, that's all. So there you got a roughed out blade. Yeah, some guys will use map gas. I just happen to have propane. Either one. 
I've never used map gas actually, but I've been told it runs and burns hotter. Get into uh, doing this hot and heavy some weekend or some day, and you find that you're having trouble uh, achieving the hardness that you want. It could be that your uh, quench medium is getting too warm. Like if you make yourself 20 knives in one day, <laughs> this, the oil is going to get pretty darn warm. And the problem you could run into is you have to have an instantaneous cooling and it could be that it's warmed up to the point where uh, you're just not getting a proper quench. In a commercial heat treat facility that's always circulated and it's cooled. <coughs> Throw some ice cubes in there. Uh, I don't think you want to do that in your RL. <laughs> you know, you can you put it around buy, it. Um, uh, these bureau rods, you can buy either water hardening or oil yes, hardening. Yes, you can, yeah. So how do you know this isn't water hardening? <coughs> um, I just experimented with it and found out that it's, you can water quench it, but water quenching is the most severe quench there is in terms of uh, severity and then uh, gradual quenching. The most severe is a, is a water quench and then a little less severe that is for shock because you, you can cause stress fractures if you shock the steel too much. So you've got water and then you have oil and then you have air quenching. Uh, air quenching, you just bring it up to temperature and leave it cool. Yeah, you can but, buy steel just for air Yes, air hardening steel, steel, yes. Got something in there that yeah. uh, uh, alloy or something that really cools down fast. Yeah, uh, in uh, air quench, uh, air hardening steel, you just bring it up to temperature and leave it cool. That's all. Yeah. There is no liquid bath quench. Okay. I watched the machinists. They were welding, you know, cutter heads on on on, uh, on the cutting <coughs> wheel. They just had a big a big pail, oil. And he would do it and bloop. Next one, bloop, and then you know they're all sitting on the bottom of the bo on the bottom of the barrel. <coughs> that was more production type. Hardly. You guys want to try that? Uh, get feel for it, or well, you know what it's going to do. <laughs> You've done enough of that. And now, um, if Wozinski was on the ball, he would have brought some emery paper here. So then what you, the next step after you heat treated your blade, is when it's in that high state of high hardness like that, uh, and Rockwell is the measure, <laughs> the most commonly used measure of hardness, it's called Rockwell hardness, I would guesstimate that that is probably, that's got to be way over 62, I, I would put it probably in the range of somewhere 60 to 66, I'm guessing, and just for what it's worth, the way that they check the hardness, they have this calibrated mechanism, it's got a preloaded diamond point put your workpiece in there. In fact, if you look, I Rockwell checked some of those blades there. Now, I don't have a Rockwell tester, but I took them to where I used to work. You'll see a little dimple in the blade. And 
what you do is you bring your diamond down and then you calibrate it right to the touch-off point and you turn a handle that picks the diamond up and that diamond is preloaded with weights and then the diamond drops and penetrates into the steel and it measures the amount of penetration and, that, and on the Rockwell scale that gives you your hardness. Can you see on any of them blades? One over here I think. Yeah, it's just a little dimple in there. Let me see. Yeah, that's what that's from. That's what that's from. Anything 52 or more is pretty good because it's hard enough that it'll hold a good edge for you, but not so hard that it could chip and crack. Is it, it in flex? Uh, the blade itself will flex, but uh, you don't want it super hard. It's true it'll get very, very sharp, but then the, bl the blade edge, the cutting edge can chip. You get a little minute chips in it, just the way he just broke that yeah. one. Same thing. Well, like a good German uh, cutlery. Kind of rock well it's, uh, it's oh, here. Yeah. See the good news, a good day. <laughs> yeah, this, this guy here. It's a Gerber knife, supposedly a pretty good knife. It's not a very good blade. Uh, it doesn't hold an edge. It's too soft. That's 440 stainless, probably. See? You can, you can, yeah. That should zing almost. Yeah. You get your blade heat treated, then you're going to want to anneal it to draw some of that hardness out of it. And <laughs> it stress relieves the blade because when you heat treat it, you've got a lot of built-in stress in it. So what you want to do is take some emery cloth, sandpaper, whatever you got, and then you're going to want to draw it down and using color again as a determinant. If you get oil on there, it distorts uh, the color picture that you're looking for. So don't handle the polished edge. It can get away from you really quick. You don't need two of them to anneal it on. No, just the one. And a smaller torch, just. It'll give you more than you add. You can do that on a kitchen stove. You could. Then you can. You got a bigger. The wife let you in the kitchen? I let her in the kitchen. Yeah, he owns the kitchen. <laughs> and this, you want to really be careful because it's all of a sudden. Somebody said you can put it in your oven and turn your oven to 400 you degrees. You probably could, yes. <laughs> yep. Are you looking for something? You yeah. Uh, I really don't want it to get to purple. Flip that guy over. That gives you your annealing colors. Oh, uh, so this is annealing colors. Yeah. I see it getting there. Yep. See? Yeah, it's, I, I want to bring it to what they call a straw color. That's the commonly used term. You probably, well, I know you wouldn't. You wouldn't ruin it if you went too far and got it too dark. You can just reheat treat it again. See, we're probably somewhere like right? Up in here, yeah. which is what 475. It's, it keeps that color, then, doesn't it? Hmm? It keeps that color. Yes, it will. <coughs> yeah, you, you virtually locked it in there. Yeah. 
that's why when you're grinding them, if you burn it, it doesn't matter if you burn it just a little bit. Yeah. Because you bring it right back to that color again. Well, you can you can create soft spots if you grind it and say you say you bring it to purple uh, or bluish purple, uh, you might end up with a soft spot in the blade, yeah. But I mean you can tell the color. Yes, got you can. Softer. Yeah, if if you're grinding it and you're getting to this color back here, uh, you're you're probably taking a lot of temper out of the blade. Pass that around. anywhere where they do commercial heat treating I mean they got pretty elaborate facilities and it's all timed and, and if you look in the heat treat manuals you put it in the oven at a certain temperature for so long and it's all timed and then they take them and quench them and uh, then they go through the annealing process yeah, but what you've done is you've relieved a lot of the stress. Yeah, I, I probably could break, break it now. I'll try it. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> break it. It'll break. Yeah, what are you breaking? Well, I don't want to break well, it. Well, I know. Well, we, we, we got more. Oh, it broke <laughs> easier, actually. Because you huh. could bend it yeah. is probably why. Yeah, it's still hard, but it relieves a lot of the stress. Yeah, but, mm. Yeah. They're not dead flat. Uh, these have been kind of abused. But if you heat treat them and you got pass this around, you got something like that. That's still borderline usable, uh, even though it's warped. It's borderline usable for a short sure. blade knife. Uh, and you might no, uh, <laughs> and you can take some of that out when you grind them, because I could have some of that to start with too. Some of these are bold to begin with, yeah. Uh, but you know, you cut this in half, yeah, for a three-inch piece. It's relatively flat. It has a slight bow to it, but it's not bad. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, so, if you don't check it, boy, you could have a little bowl. Yeah, if, if you've got a, if you're starting out with a piece that's really badly bowed, I wouldn't even screw around with it. I would just bend it straight. But if you, if you guys want any of these here, uh, <laughs> this one is usable. It's got a slight bowl, but it has to be a meal. Anybody wants it? <laughs> no, that's just from, uh, that's in the blade. That's in the blade. This is tempered already. I just have to kneel it. You have to anneal it. Uh, 